Welcome to our um, fourth dis discussion um, as part of our mental health series with the Burnt Chef Project. I'm Cara, editor of the Staff Canteen, um, and each week I'm joined by the Burnt Chef Project founder, Chris Hall, and a guest to discuss uh, mental health in the hospitality industry. Um, before we get started, if you've got any questions, uh, please do comment on this post and we will ask as many as we can. So this week, uh, Chris and I are joined by uh, Pete Tofus, who is an ex-chef and is now a catering manager. Uh, so, uh, Chris, Pete, I'll let you pop your pop your video on so we can see you. Hi. How are we doing? Hello. Thank you for joining me. Um, so, uh, Pete, let's uh, start with you. So, tell us a bit about yourself before we get into any of the uh, of the other questions that we're going to go through. Um, tell us a bit about you and your career. Um, well, I'm based in based in Dorset. Uh, I headed off to uh, London uh, to start off with. Worked at a place, um, a wonderful gentleman's club called uh, Boodles. Um, from then, I headed back to Dorset. Um, it was my home, so uh, headed back to Dorset. Uh, joined uh, the Chewton Glen, which was um, I was very lucky. Um, wonderful place, uh, great chefs. Um, learned a lot there. Um, and then from there, sort of moved on uh, various places throughout the south. Um, Harbour Heights Captain's Club. Um, they're all good, you know, um, great kitchens, uh, really good chefs. And uh, I was lucky enough to uh, learn a lot from those chefs. So, yeah, um, that's 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 my back background, really. Yeah. OK, brilliant. And so why did you want to be involved in this uh, mental health uh, series that uh, myself and, and Chris decided to put together? Other than Chris probably twisting your arm. <laughs> well, no, no. Um, uh, I've worked closely with Chris for a good few years now. Um, and he sort of approached me um, with this idea, this concept of the Burnt Chef project. And then I just remember thinking that it was such a great thing to be able to get um to be able to get chefs talking um i think we all know that there's you know um there is there are chefs that suffer with um with mental health um it happens to a lot of us um and chris really wanted to bring this out in the open for people to start talking about it and i remember thinking that it was just such a great such a great cause such a great thing and we could help so many people um including myself um you know so um that was something that really sort of um rang strong with me that that we can help these people um and help the industry and if that was possible even just by chris you know it started off with chris taking photographs and um look at where it's look at where it's got to now it's got so many people talking so when he sort of said to me, would I like to come on and, and have a chat? I was, uh, I was obviously uh, terrified at first. And then I thought, no, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's great. It's great. And, and the more we can speak about it, the better. Well, don't so, worry. No, it, it's just us. No one's watching, really. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's not live at all. <laughs> um, so uh, before we, we came on, I um, had a quick chat with you. And, and you obviously, you stepped away from being a chef. What was the reason behind that? How come you decided to, you know, take a step away from the kitchen? Um, in all honesty, it was, it was just kind of, uh, it was something that happened. It was something that happened in lockdown, really. Um, I guess the, the saying is, is when you're working and when you're, when you're sort of in the moment, you, you don't notice it. You're constantly just working away, working away and, and time flies by and life flies by. And then I remember it got down to sort of lockdown and, and the first, the first sort of three weeks were, were horrendous they, they were just horrendous I didn't know what to do with myself so I, I was kind of went from sort of like a hundred miles an hour to to zero in a day and it was kind of like wow at first I didn't know how to deal with it uh, I was just kind of sat around looking around thinking what, what what do I do um and then after the sort of three week period I started um kind of it sounds terrible but I started kind of enjoying it I was like wow I, I get to you know I was getting to spend time at, at home uh, I was getting to spend time with my wife and son um and doing things I've never never really done before and um I remember thinking to myself this is this is great and I kind of made that decision because I thought to myself 
if your heart's no longer in it, then it, you'd be doing a disservice to your team almost. You know, if you're not giving them 110% um, because you, your heart's not completely in it, then, then that's not fair on them either. It's not fair on them. It's not fair to the customers that come and eat. Um, and it's not fair, you know, with, with the, uh, the plate of food that you're providing um, because you're not completely committed. So at that point, I kind of said, well, you know, I, I, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying life. Um, and it just wasn't working for me anymore. It just wasn't working for me anymore. And I had to be really honest and just kind of turn around and say, yeah, I'm going to have to take a step away from being um, not food as a whole, because uh, as you know, I'm, um, I've got a role as a catering manager. Um, but um, with regards to being in the kitchen every single day, um, lunch and dinner, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't commit to that. I didn't want to commit to that. So I thought it was only fair that I kind of take a step away. Okay. Um, and we want, before we go into some of the, the, the other points that we had on, on, on mental health and, and going forward into those, I, I know one of your points that really stood out to me uh, about this is that you really wanted to discuss um, what a great industry hospitality is. I mean, I know you said, obviously, you've decided to take a step back. Absolutely, yeah. But I thought... No, Chris, I don't know what you think, but we've, you know, we've had a lot of discussions um, with people who are still, who are still in the industry, and it's about, you know, her heart, bleh, there are some negative points. So I thought this was such a positive to come in with. So I don't know, maybe you want to talk a bit about why you wanted to say like what a good industry is. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, I think it's a wonderful industry. I really do. I think there's so many good points um, to start off with um, that the friendships and the relationships that you build up with the people that you work with they're, they're it's it's almost like a bond a bond that, that just can't be broken you know you, you like your team and your your, your colleagues you, you do anything anything to help each other you know because you've really you, throughout the throughout your days and, and your services you've been in I know it's, it's not the right phrase, but almost like in the trenches with them. You know, you, you've experienced the hard services, the good services, um, the good days and the bad days. Um, and you're, you're almost in it together. Um, so those are friendships that you build, you know, and I've got, um, you know, friends that I've worked with and they're, they're you know, dotted all around the country, abroad. Um, so with that respect, um, it's it's great the, the relationships that you build up so something that um chris chris will know well there was a there was a little caption that i saw and it was from andrew galt at the um captain's club who also is a he's a wonderful chef but he actually put on uh, he posted up a picture and he got a lot of likes because it was a great dish um and he put it's nice to feel love from the brotherhood and and that kind of rang really true that it, it almost becomes like a like a brotherhood like um yeah, uh, a unit. Um, it gives you the opportunity to be creative. Um, the world's a limit, you know. You can take you can take a, a commodity, a piece of uh, produce, and really, that's it. You, you've got free reign. You can do whatever you like. So it, it really gets your creative side going. Um, it. I love the fact that the industry accepts all people from all walks of life. And I think that, that's, that's brilliant. doesn't matter where you've come from, what you've done, um, the hospitality industry will take you in, it will dust you down and it will set you on your path, you know, and it, and it, will, give you, it will give you a purpose um, and it almost gives you a family. Um, the, the people that you're working with become, become like family. And I say that because, you know, we're, we're spending 13 hours a day, 14 hours a day together. You know, if, if you're not close to those people at the end of a 14 hour day, then uh, then you're doing something wrong. Um, so, yeah, that's that's something uh, it can take you wherever you want around the world. Um, the kitchen language is universal. So it doesn't matter where you are in the world. As long as you've got, a, 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 you know, a bit of experience, the chances are you can pick up wherever you are, pick up that kitchen and, and, and start working. Um, which is a joy. So if you want to travel, it's the game. It's the game for you. And and finally, I would say, food is food is is a joy. It's it's an experience, and you're creating that every single day for somebody else. 
So when that person comes in for something to eat, it could be, or it could be just a bite to eat. It could be a, a celebration. It could be a birthday, an anniversary. It could be anything. And you are contributing to that. Um, and you see the people when, when, you know, when you serve people and, and front of house will see this quite often, or hopefully quite often, that when they put down a plate of food and, and you know, people are uh, kind of wild or, or they're really happy with it and, and they leave the restaurant or wherever they are and they say, you know, I've had a really amazing time tonight or today. You've contributed to that. And I think that's, that's really special to be, able to, to be able to say that you do that day in, day out. Yeah, Chris, anything to add? I think it's really, it's just really good to start on that, on that point. And it's a very different point, isn't it, to what we've discussed in previous, previous lives. Yeah, I think so. And I think Pete is, you know, Pete's an experienced chef. He's, he's seen a lot of different styles of kitchens, a lot of different working environments. And, you know, <clears throat> when I originally started up or was looking to start up the Bird Chef Project, it was Pete I came to originally and said, look, here's, your, here's an idea. What do you reckon? And Pete was like, yeah, let's, let's just go for it, mate. Like, honestly, it's it's a good thing. And I think that when he's when he's talking about the reasons why people should get into this industry, I wholeheartedly agree. And that's the route that I think that we as an industry should need to be aiming for is and that encouraging, certainly with students as well. Like, you know, if you want to travel, learn the language of a kitchen. As Pete said, I think you, you summarise it beautifully. Learn the language of a kitchen. You can go wherever the hell you want. You know, you don't even need to know the native language. You just need to know how the kitchen runs and you'll fit right in. And if you can build up those relationships in those areas, I think, you know, that's that's where we need to be focusing on. Um, and it's something that I, I can't say any better than you. I'm just wizarding on that, mate. <laughs> you have me inspired. There we go. <laughs> so, uh, Pete, obviously you have been in a lot of kitchens. You've been in the industry for a long time before you decided to step away. Have you ever had to deal with... Um, mental health personally or with a member of your team that you've worked with within hospitality and, and if you if you have and any examples and, and kind of how you've dealt with that to, you know just for people to understand how you've come at it um yes yes is, is the is the short answer um i don't know i don't know many chefs that that haven't um including myself um some hide it better than others um but yeah you i've certainly come across it um when you do come across it with others um it can sometimes be easier and it can sometimes be harder um because you uh you look at that person and um again we go back to we go back to um describing team members and colleagues as family so um, you, you tend to look at that person and it, and it kind of hurts you as well because you know that that person is struggling and you see him as family. Um, and quite often, quite often, especially in the past, um, there wasn't the tools available to, to solve the problem. Um, we didn't have enough knowledge on it. Um, so with the best will in the world, we kind of just sort of said, you know, you'll be okay or um yeah uh, you'll be fine tomorrow's another day um because we just didn't have the tools and and lack of knowledge really lack of knowledge um but with the likes of um with the likes of yourself and chris and and all these other all these other great courses um we're slowly slowly starting to learn and we're slowly starting to learn how to how to deal with these things and spot them earlier um with regards when it's when it's kind of yourself and it's happening to yourself, um, the the it's kind of easier. It's not easier, and it is. The barriers tend to come up. Um, you, your first instinct is to protect yourself, so the barriers come up. Um, you, you push it away. Um, it's a classic sort of chef saying, "Push on, push on," and you'll say it in your head, "Just push on, push on." Um, and really, you, you can either go two ways. You either become lucky where it sort of passes by hook or by crook and you think, wow, that's gone. Or you get to a point where you're just kind of like, actually, now I, I, I do need I, I do need some support here. Um, so, yeah, those are there, there have been times. Um, and as I said previously, you know, there were times where it happened years ago where I didn't know how to deal with it. And that could have been with team members. 
um, and you kind of try and have a chat with them and you could try and sort of see where um, see where their issues lie. Um, and then other times you just kind of sort of say, you know, just do your best or you'll, you'll get over it. And, and those are the things you kind of say. But as, as I said, now we're kind of getting to the stage now where our knowledge is growing so much that, um, that yeah, we're, we're, we're learning how to deal with it. We can offer better advice. Um, companies are offering um, far more support now, far more support. Um, with helping with helping staff and, and team members, so yeah, I, I would say now that we're on the we're on the upward trend, so to speak. Yeah, um, and what are the um uh, what are the contributing factors to poor mental health within hospitality, in your opinion? I know that was one of the points you wanted to touch on. Um, I think this is. I, I think part of it is is a very sort of very sort of grey area because you can never label it. You know everybody's experience is completely unique it's completely unique so to say that yeah you're you know you're suffering from poor mental health because of x y and z it's just impossible because there's you know there's there's every single day there is from the moment you leave your bed until you get back into your bed in the evening there are billions upon billions of different possibilities that happen throughout that day some of them will will affect you in a positive way some of them will affect you in a negative way so to say, you know, what's what's causing it is is really really difficult. Um, I think there are some underlying factors that we all kind of know, um, and they tend to come up quite a lot, which is you know sort of hours, um, hours, uh, equipment, uh, working conditions, uh, staff shortages, and possibly financial restraints. Um, I think a lot of chefs, well, certainly quite a few, will, will struggle with one of those five. Um, starting with the hours, I guess, um, it's, it's tough. It's a tough industry. Um, and the, the real sort of, you know, bottom line is, is you sort of talk from, from the minute that you get in that if you, if you want to succeed in this industry, you, it's tough and, and you'll have to put in the hours. So we, we are aware of that. And, and I guess when you're, when you're a lot younger as well, I guess the hours don't really matter because where else have you got to be? Where else have you got to be, you know, or, or you're working with your friends. So it's great. You, you've got your own little bubble. So you're working with your friends, you're going out with those same people, you're socialising with them. So the hours don't really matter. Um, I think when you get older, when you're not so much for the, the, uh, the socialising and, and this, that and the other, I think that's when it kind of struggles. Um, so I think that can sometimes have a negative effect. I think if you, if, for example, if you've got a, if you've got family at home, a partner or a relationship or, or, you know, children, I think that's where the hours really start to hit home um, because you're just not present. You're not present. You're not, um, you're not, you're not giving your all to those relationships. Um, and you can either be one or the other, you know, um, I don't, I think it's very, very difficult to find that happy medium of, of giving your all to the kitchen or, you know, giving your all to your family or your children or your loved ones. I, I think that's very, very difficult, especially if you're sort of getting home at 11 o'clock at night, um, because nine times out of 10, they're in bed. Um, and on your days off, um, I think we've discussed this before, Chris, you know, you wake up and very first day on your first day off, you're absolutely exhausted. There's no other way of saying it. You're exhausted. You're grumpy. You're not, you're not approachable. And it takes a day almost to recover. So that's, that's kind of one of your days off, miss. Um, so yeah, that's, that's one of the biggest things for, for hours, I would guess, um, for, for hours. I think that, that really sort of, hits home um the financial the circum sorry the circumstances at the minute we're kind of forced well obviously i know we're in lockdown but previous to that with the curfew and everything we've kind of been forced to have less hours so do you think that is a is a positive change the industry is probably going to have to embrace um i don't know i don't know if, if this situation kind of helps because you've got an awful lot of uncertainty in with it 
So then that creates a, a negative experience as well, I think. Um, it, it's kind of really sort of the industry has been hit so hard at the moment and there is so much uncertainty that you can't actually enjoy the time that you have, the time that you have spare. Um, I think the only way that you can look at it is if, you know, uh, let's be honest, if, if you was to get a, if you was to get a, a week of straight shifts where you sort of finished at six o'clock, I think most chefs out there would love it. I think they really would because they would have the job security. There'd be, having less hours uh, not that that's possible at the moment but um i think that that's the difference i think the uncertainty causes uh, at the moment with lockdowns and shortened hours i think that's causing more more anxiety than and and stress than than it is doing good yeah good point yeah a really good point and i think i think you know again furlough is i think in order to be within hospitality you have to have a passion it's it's you know, obviously, we, you know, there's no shying away from it. There's a big drug and drink culture within um, hospitality um, in terms of self medication. But I think, you know, when we talk about hospitality and becoming into this trade, it's a drug in itself. And it's a drug that's very difficult to leave. And I think, Pete, just going back to, to, to touch upon the two points in terms of family and then furlough. And I think that when you do get older and you do have a family, perhaps if the family is an uh, necessarily understanding of your career, then all of a sudden your, your goal in life, your passion, your creativity, the very reason why you're in this trade starts to be questioned and you feel yourself getting split in two and your loyalty is split. And I think that's where this almost like, you know, you could be at a crossroads for 10, 15 years, you know, and I think that's where people start to suffer a little bit from their uh, from mental health and not having their why anymore and not know what, what tribe they should belong to and be important, important to. And as for enjoying time off, I think that's that's it's a tricky question for for chefs. I think you know, any any chef or hospitality professional that truly loves hospitality and loves and has a passion for being within it, I think will hate being off because they're away from what they love and they're away from what they know. And I think Pete, you've hit the nail on the head with regards to the fact that you know not only are we away from familiar environments, but also at the same time we do have other pressures and. You know, financial insecurities, you know, bigger picture insecurities as well in terms of what the industry is going to look like after this. Um, so it's almost like a, a double-edged sword. You know, you can't, as Pete says, you can't enjoy it whilst you've got these concerns. And then also when you go back into the industry, it's even more of a shock to the system because your body, like physically and mentally, has become used to being a little bit more rested. So, you know, when people say, oh, you've had four months off, you just got to get back into it and, you know, Great. I completely understand. Certainly for businesses, we need that business and we need to be able to do it, do it. But, um, you know, I think it just shows the level of chefs are, chefs are athletes, right? And I think we've mentioned this in the previous chat. Chefs are athletes. And, you know, if you're not constantly using your body and your brain in the way that an athlete would use their body and the brain or within the kitchen environment, then it becomes used to being uh, at home body. You know, used to getting up later, used to sitting on the sofa, you know, and all of your body starts to relax and your brain starts to relax. So it is a little bit of a shock when it comes back. And I think that's also slightly concerning for, for people. I think as well, I, I, I had an amazing chef lecturer, wonderful uh, chef lecturer, um, made known, Chris, uh, Dave, Dave Boland. Um, and I remember he said to us before we went out to industry, uh, when we was at college, and he, it's, a, it's a point that you've just made that rings so true. Um, he turned around to us and he said to us, um, you'll need to be match fit. And I remember thinking, what does he mean, match fit? Like, well, what's he mean? And, I, and, and it, only, it only like sort of registered when I did my first week. And I remember I got home and just thinking, I don't know if I can do this. I, I, I don't know if I can do it. And, and I just ate all over. Um, and it wasn't until about a month in that I started to take it in my stride. And that's what he meant about being match fit. And it's like you said, you know, you enjoy that time off. You've had all that time off and then you get sort of thrown back into it and you struggle and you struggle with that. And you know, as well, like, you know, as well, just leading up to going back, that you th kind of think to yourself, I'm going to struggle with this a little bit. Uh, it's going to, it's going to, um, it's going to hurt a little bit when I go back. Um, and then going on to that other point, you know, when, when you do take that break, as I mentioned, when I went into lockdown, um, I really struggled because I didn't know how to stop. So like, I, I would be finding anything to do. 
anything possible. It, it didn't matter whether it was, you know, I had a pristine garden and you know, <laughs> washing cars and doing all these different things and tidying and organizing. I was thinking, why am I doing this? And it was just because I couldn't stop. I didn't know how to. And then once you finally worked it out, it took me a good three weeks. But once I finally worked it out, I kind of thought, this is this is actually really nice. Yeah, this is this is good. So yeah, that, I, I hear what you're saying with the hours. Yeah, and so what what tips do you both have then for people? Because obviously we're in lockdown again, and there, you know, hopefully we'll be heading back into work in the next couple of weeks. So how do you keep yourself like not just physically but mentally kind of ready to to be match fit? Like how do you do that for for a month when you're out and but you know you've got to go back? Um, personally, it would, it would be um, all chefs are good at it. Writing me on plus list. Every day, every day. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter, again, whether you have to, uh, you know, obviously don't fill it. Don't fill it so you've got a huge list that is, you know, completely unachievable. Um, but one day it may be just to, you know, organise something. Um, you know, organise something, go for a walk, do this, do that. Keep yourself active. Keep yourself active constantly because the worst thing that you can do is go from, you know, sort of 100 miles an hour to, to zero in a day it's just it just doesn't work for you so yeah i would say write a write a mise en place list um set realistic goals um chris and i have spoken about this before and it was it was kind of like you know don't don't sort of write on that list you know i'm going to run 10k every day um because after the first after the first day you're going to ache and think i'm rubbish at this and i'm never doing it again um and it kind of that that will that will affect you as well it might be just go for a walk and then the following the following day go for a longer walk go for a, go for a brisk walk try a jog around the block and once you've done that before you know it give it a week two weeks you'll be running 5k every day um so i think it's about setting realistic goals and and you know making sure that they're achievable um because if you go in you know you go in with uh you know a pro athletes schedule you, you're going to fail and it just it that will hit that will hit you harder than not doing it at all yeah okay um and peter now you've um stepped away a little bit do you have a different perspective looking back in on on hospitality and, and obviously in terms of bringing uh, you know mental health and awareness of that within the industry which is what we're trying to talk about today do you look at it differently do you see it as you know, are employers doing enough or do employees need to take a bit more responsibility? Uh, what, what's your thoughts on it now you can kind of look back in? Um, I kind of think it's a, it's a little bit from both sides. Um, I think that um, us as chefs and well, not just chefs, but the whole hospitality industry, I guess the front of house as well and management. I don't think we do enough to help ourselves. Um, we kind of get stuck in tunnel vision, um, an obsession. So it kind of you kind of look at things and you're like, um, you know, all you can think about is all you can think about is that service or that food or or, or you know that walk-in fridge. That's that's all you think about. And it becomes like tunnel vision. You can't see anything on the outside. Um, I think that's the biggest thing that I've come away with that you can sort of sometimes you have to take a step back, and that's from our side. Um, trust your team. That's what they're there for. Let them let them flourish as well. Trust your team. Uh, try not to, you know, micromanage. Take everything on yourself. Um, let them develop, um, and then write a plan. You need a clear plan of what you what you want to achieve, because if you don't, you you just be, like I said, obsessed with what whatever is in front of you. Um, I think I think businesses um can do a little bit as well to help um clear clear goals uh, that is something that is very very important um because when you employ a chef you're not just in, you're not just employing a team member or, or a front of house member or anything like that you're employing all these people to share your dream that's what they have to do they have to achieve your goal because as a business owner it doesn't matter whether you turn around to them and say to them yeah, you've got free reign and you can do this and you can do this. Eventually, and towards the end, you will have you will have your say as a business owner. And, and that's completely right. You're, you've taken all the risks, but then you need to let the team know and have a clear goal. 
um, strong leadership skills to know where what what direction the team's pushing in. Um, and then they can buy into that. And once they've bought into it and they're fully invested, then they will give their all. And that, that's just my opinion. Uh, second of all, they can, they can um, provide the tools. So you've got leadership, which will show the direction and the tools, which is management and provide the correct tools for your team to succeed. So if you just want to be a brasserie, make sure that that whole team knows this is the style of food that we want to produce. This is the style of service that we want to execute. This is the surroundings that we want. And so everyone is fully clear. And then after that, they have the tools to achieve that goal. I think that would be a real big help because what I find is, is a lot of people in the hospitality industry kind of move from pillar to post, chasing that dream that Soup says. Whereas if they knew it from the start, it would be invested. Um, I think that would be that would be a great help. Um, I have to mention because uh, when I joined, I joined um, uh, as a catering manager, Tops Tops Nurseries, um, and the reason why I joined them is because I wanted um, to use my experience to give something back, um, and that was to give back to the children that attend. Um, you know, uh, good nutrition, good food. Um, so I wanted to do that, and I was really, really blown away with some of the things that they have in place for their staff members. I, I'd never ever come across them before. And I, I was, I, I remember phoning up Chris sort of like, Chris, you won't believe what they've got. And, and, and I've kind of found out now that just through generally speaking to different people that a lot of companies, uh, you know, do these, have these things in place. Um, but yeah, they're constantly, constantly in contact. So they're always keeping in contact management. They're, even over, even over lockdown there, you'll have a, a once a month, it's, it's a kit, keep in contact, um, and it's over Zoom, and it's just a general chat. And you can bring up anything you like, whether it's within the company, what you're doing at home, anything. It, it's almost like an appraisal, but just checking in once a month. Um, they also have a, a service available where they've got um, counsellors dotted around the area, um, and the posters are up in all the staff areas. Now, at any one time, if you're feeling, um, you know, if you're feeling a bit low or your mental health is suffering, you can call any of those counsellors and book a session and you will get six free sessions. And then an invoice is sent to the company completely anonymously, um, which I found fantastic that you can actually just phone up and talk to somebody. Um, it, it was just a great, I remember thinking, wow, they're actually paying for six free sessions because that's another thing, you know, people do often want support, but sometimes can't afford it. Um, so that was another thing that they did. Um, they set up a, a, a trust fund um, where all the staff pay into a fund uh, once a month. It's, uh, I think it's a pound of your wages. And should anyone fall into, you know, financial hardship or, you know, uh, there's bereavement, anything that really affects you, you would have access to funds. And that, that kind of, that kind of uh, limits anxiety to a certain extent because you always know that you've got support. It's almost like a family. And again, it goes back to the hospitality where, um, again, you always felt like the team members that you're working with, they were family and they'd always have your back. And, and it's the same with this, the same with this company as well. Um, so they've got lots and lots of things that they put into place um, and to be quite honest they're, they're, they're very easy transferable they can be a lot of these things can be transferred to other other establishments there's no reason for it so something like that would really help I think yeah Chris some really interesting and refreshing kind of points there what, what, what have you got to say about that yeah 100 percent I mean I think because of the nature of hospitality and the number of businesses that exist, um, you've got such a wealth of different business owners and management teams scattered across this industry. You know, it's the third biggest industry in the UK and, and I think worldwide. I mean, it employs something like 72 million people. So there's a lot of people there. And I think that even if we can inspire 10, 15, 20% of business owners, management teams out there to start adopting these certain strategies to put in place to support their team better. I think um, that in itself will, will make waves within the industry. And it will, you know, there are a lot of people out there who are already doing it. I spoke to a restaurant in uh, Brighton fairly recently um, who you know, all, all just focus on well-being and, and what their service is going to do to their staff and how that's going to come across. 
Um, so there are companies out there who are leading this charge, but I guess a great analogy for it is you wouldn't send, you know, a chef into a kitchen with a spoon to cut a steak, you know, so why should your management teams have be so ill-equipped as well? And I think once people start realizing that if they can invest a little bit, the return on their investment will be monumental and their businesses, you know, they'll, they'll flourish. Um, so, well, yeah, well said, Pete, like very useful insights. Yeah, thanks, Pete. Like, I really, that was really interesting um, and I really enjoyed that. So thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, I really enjoyed talking to you. Um, we have, uh, before I say goodbye to you, we do have a change to the schedule next week, I believe. Chris, I'm putting you on the spot now. Um, so it, <laughs> do you want to say who our guest is next week? Um, is it confirmed? Yes, it's confirmed. So um, Luke Holder from Limewood Hotel will be joining us. Um, and Luke has a fantastic heritage, great background. He's been in the industry for a long time and he's got some very interesting insights into how, uh, how hospitality and how kitchens and rotors could be run to improve um, the retention and well-being of the staff. Um, having spoken to him last week, he actually says that he needs to you know, actively try and encourage people to leave his kitchen because they've been with him for such a long period of time. Um, and so I think it's, it'll be well worth, you know, well worth tuning in for that. It'll be very, uh, very insightful for anyone that is wondering off the back of today's conversation, what they can put in place to, to make a better environment for, for their business and their staff. Brilliant. Well, I will look forward to that. So you can join us um, next week, next Wednesday at 4.45. We will see you then. Thank you so much, Pete. It was great to chat to you and great Thank to chat to you much. again, Chris, as always. Um, and I'll see you next week. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Bye-bye.